Hello guys, this is Karthik from ExecutorAutomation.com and this is part 6 of our ALM with Team Foundation Server Dev and QA focused video series. And in this part we are going to talk about introduction to Team Foundation Server Web. And before watching this part I would request you to watch part 5 since this part will have continuity from that part. Alright, so let's get started. Team Foundation Server Web. Planning and tracking the progress of your software development project is simple when you use Team Foundation Server's web portal. The URL to access the Team Foundation Server web portal will be in this format. So as we already know, while we were installing the Team Foundation Server, we found that the Team Foundation Server's URL was http colon double slash server colon 8080 slash tfs. And you can see that to access your project, you can do this kind of format http colon double slash server name colon 8080 slash tfs slash collection name slash project name. The web portal connects you to the team project defined for a team project collection on the TFS. So we can manage using Team Foundation Server Web something like source codes, work items, builds, test efforts, and even machines. So all these things can be done using Team Foundation Server Web along with test runs. So Team Foundation Server Web is another most powerful feature which was not much powerful while Team Foundation Server 2010 was released, but right now it is much powerful. Configuring permissions. So with Team Foundation Server Web, one can easily configure and manage the permissions of the team project collections, uh, team projects, and team, etc. So Team Foundation Server is yet another best tool which most of the people across the team will be using, not just for uh, the code check in and check out or maybe uh, doing some kind of uh, operation that we can do with the Visual Studio but Team Foundation Server Web has got even more lot of features that we will see in a demo. So for that I'm going to open my Chrome browser and I'm going to navigate to my project here. So for that, I'm going to navigate to my server colon uh, 8080 slash TFS and I have my domain user called auto user. So this guy has some permissions for my team foundation server, but as of now, he has already logged into this particular project. So instead of doing this way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in as an administrator because this guy is still not configured with any project. Alright, so I have logged in as an administrator and this is a clean board right now and nothing else is being configured yet and no team project is being configured for this particular user. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse in this particular option and you can see that this will bring me up the default collections and what are the project within the particular default collections. So as you already know in our default collection we already have uh, two projects uh, one is employee project and another one is the automation framework project so i'm going to connect to our employee project right now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this employee project and then i'm going to hit navigate and this time it will take little time and you can see that it's going to bring me up a lot of other options and uh, it will be showing something like this uh, show some features of team foundation server web access is not visible to you and you can see that it says about some of the licensing option of course it is there so i'm just going to close that and you can see there are a lot of other new options coming up right now after i connect to the particular project something like home of course it was there and there is an option called code work build and test and there are some pinned items so you can uh, pin uh, whatever you want any work items if you want to pin it you can pin it you can see that option right here and any sprint is going on then it will be shown here and it's burn down ratios and also uh, it will show you the members whichever you can add for this particular project so you can add any number of members if you want to which we'll discuss in the next video of this video series and also you can see that all your codes will be sitting in this particular uh, team foundation server itself so you can also see the code you have checked in so whatever you see in the visual studio 
in the source control explorer the same thing you can see from the TFS web as well so if you go to this code menu you can see that it will have an explorer and it will show you the application and if you click this particular application you can see all the cores available now also there is a chain set remember we have a chain set of five and six for this particular project so it will also show you that particular uh, chain set and it will show you that uh, this is the uh, changes I have made for the first time so I have created the project and then I did this particular uh, command for this particular check-in. So first check-in to the employee application project, and then I added a new employee to this employee entity. So even the change set is now visible for me here, right? So I can go to the Explorer back. And also I can see that there is a uh, tab called work, and using this work, it's a lot of stuff you can do lot of work items and do a lot of stuff. So of course, we're going to discuss about this work item and other stuff in the upcoming videos of this video series. But as of now, don't bother about it. Similarly, the build and the test tabs, all those things we'll be discussing in upcoming videos of this video series. But as of now, just be informed that this particular Team Foundation Server web is most powerful as well compared to your Team Foundation server within the Visual Studio because this web interface is something which will be used across the team members even who don't have the Visual Studio installed in their machine they can still have access to this particular web interface. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.